Have you ever wondered if what you do matters? How does someone who grows up on a farm, is schooled in a one-room country schoolhouse, and whistles while he milks cows, change the world? He believes in something passionately, works tirelessly to make a contribution, and stands for something bigger than himself. Have you heard of the Green Revolution? The term Green Revolution is used when describing the global changes that have resulted from biological innovations and advancements through successful agricultural experiments. The Green Revolution has dramatically changed life for many people and helped sustain the populations in many third world countries previously facing famine more than 40 years ago. Famines in India, for example, once accepted as inevitable, have not returned since the introduction of hybrid crops. These crops, developed under the supervision of the father of the Green Revolution and a true innovator of our time. The man known as the father of the Green Revolution is Norman Borlaug. Norman Borlaug was born on March 25, 1914. He was raised in Cresco, Iowa, near Minnesota. He was a typical farm boy, educated in a one-room schoolhouse like many other rural children during this time period in the U.S. He had many hobbies and interests, including wrestling and baseball. He had dreams of becoming a player for the Chicago Cubs. He graduated the University of Minnesota with a bachelor's degree in 1937, and he returned to the university for his master's degree in 1940 and his doctorate in 1942. Dr. Borlaug didn't start out thinking he was going to change the world. He just had one simple belief. If the world population continues to increase at the same rate, we will destroy the species, he declared. He worked for two years as a microbiologist on the staff of the Du Pont de Numeres Foundation in charge of research on industrial and agricultural bactericides, fungicides, and preservatives. In 1944, he was appointed geneticist and plant pathologist assigned to organize and direct the Cooperative Wheat Research and Production Program in Mexico. This program was the first of its kind a joint venture between the Mexican government and the Rockefeller Foundation. Its goal was to research and innovate in the ideas of genetics, plant breeding, plant pathology, etymology, agronomy, soil science, and cereal technology. When Borlaug first went to Mexico, he found that the crops were ravaged by disease, the soils were depleted, and the farmers could barely feed themselves. While there, he survived illness, floods, and many personal hardships. He started to give up hope. With little funds or equipment, he started work with a group of scientists to improve the production yields of tropical plants. He spent countless hours hunched over the plants in the Mexican fields, manipulating tiny wheat blossoms to cross different plant strains, innovating hybrids, and experimenting with different minerals to enrich the soil. To speed up his work and allow his team to work around the seasonal changes, he set up two different agricultural operations thousands of miles apart. As his breeding techniques improved, he noticed differences between the wheat growth in different climates. He crossed a tall, thin stalk with a shorter dwarf variety from Japan, and in the early 1950s, he innovated a semi-dwarf wheat strand that grew shorter shafts and was capable of supporting wheat production in more harsh conditions. He crossed this with rust-resistant strains and produced an ideal wheat for Mexico's climate. This innovation spawned dramatic increases in production. When wheat is ripening properly, when the wind is blowing across the field, you can hear the beards of the wheat rubbing together. They sound like pine needles in a forest. It is a sweet, whispering music that once you hear, you'll never forget, recalled Borlaug. From 1950 to 1992, the world's grain output rose from 692 million tons produced in 1.7 billion acres of cropland to 1.9 billion tons on 1.73 billion acres of cropland, an increase of more than 150%. What would have happened without this innovation? Either massive expansion of cropland to address the rising hunger index, or massive starvation. 
Borlaug is quoted here as a young man. I am not one to sit idly by to see man breed himself into a corner by increasing his numbers faster than food production is being increased. And if I have anything to contribute to this world, when I know that our scientific facts are right and we have the materials that can be brought together in a meaningful production program, I am going to play that card and play it hard. Borlaug's innovative work dramatically changed the production of wheat in Mexico. And over the next four decades, these innovations traveled around the globe. Norman Borlaug's work and innovative contributions in the fields of plant production have had a broad impact on the world. While crop failure and hunger persist in many parts of the world, the mass starvation predicted by many experts in, 19, in the 1960s and 1970s were avoided largely due to the efforts of Borlaug and his students. Today, we confront a similar problem, feeding the anticipated global population of more than 8 billion people in the next two decades. The world has, or will soon have, the agricultural technology available to meet this challenge. The question today is whether extremists in the environmental movement will grind this incredible advancement to a halt. Norman Borlaug has been recognized worldwide for his work and received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970, the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2007, just one year before his death at the age of 95. He was also awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. His teachings through the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center and with the Carter Center, formed by former President Jimmy Carter, have been cited to have impacted more than 8 million farmers in 15 countries. More than any other single person of his age, he has helped to provide bread for a hungry world, said Nobel Peace Prize Committee Chairman Ian Lyonnais when awarding the prize to Borlaug in 1970. We have made this choice in the hope that providing bread will also give world peace. Norman Borlaug did mattered. <laughs>